Welcome everyone to the beautiful island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic. My name is Stuart McPherson. I'm the founder and project leader of Darwin 200 and it's an absolute pleasure to bring you to this beautiful island. Look, I'll do a, a quick 360. The main town of the island is up through that fortification there, through that gate. For 500 years, ships have been using this beautiful island as a victualling station to resupply, to get fresh water, to get fresh food, and to get fresh supplies. And we are incredibly lucky. The Darwin 200 ship that's discovered it is right out there. Can you see it just over there? That's our ship. Obviously, we're, we're nearly two years into our global voyage, and it's just a pleasure and an honor to be coming to this very, very special island. Well, for those of you that don't know, St. Helena is a very important place. It has literally hundreds and hundreds of unique species of animals and plants. In fact, it's sometimes even called the equivalent of the Galapagos in the Atlantic. And from memory, I think it's 600 endemic invertebrates, bugs alone, and dozens of unique plants. And, and there were originally many unique birds, one of which survives, the wirebird. So it's a very important island for its wildlife and ecology. But there's also four very special giant tortoises. The oldest giant tortoise in St. Helena is Jonathan. He arrived on the island in 1882, but he arrived as a sub-adult. So it's actually thought that he was born around 1832. So that would make him about 193 years old. The truth is his exact age isn't really known because no one was there when he hatched, but the fact that he was nearly an adult in 1888 yeah, would indicate that, that birthday around um, 1832. And this makes him the oldest land animal on Earth today, at least as far as we know. So this amazing animal is 193 years old. He lives at Plantation House, which is the home of the governor of the island, this beautiful white house. And Jonathan spends most of his time munching grass. He loves eating grass on the lawn. He's a little bit like a natural lawnmower. He keeps the grass nice and short. He has a very peaceful life, but just stop and think for a moment. He's lived for nearly two centuries. He was alive not just in World War II, not just in World War I. He was alive through most of Queen Victoria's life. He was even alive when Charles Darwin visited St. Helena in 1836. Okay, he wasn't on the island at that time, but Jonathan was actually alive. He's a contemporary of Charles Darwin. Remember, he was born in 1832, and Darwin came to St. Helena in 1836. So their lives really overlap. And in fact, Jonathan was alive for most of Charles Darwin's life. Well, Jonathan isn't the only giant tortoise here on beautiful St. Helena. There's actually three other tortoises. Emma, who's 56, David, who's also 56, and Frederick, who's 53. So these guys are quite young. These three tortoises are actually quite young by, by tortoise standards. Frederick has a bit of an interesting story. He was originally brought to St. Helena hoping that he might be a mate for Jonathan or one of the other tortoises. And he was thought to be a girl called Frederica. But when he actually arrived on St. Helena, it turned out that he was a boy. So, um, so he became Frederick instead of Frederica. David's a really lovely tortoise. He loves to wallow in the mud, because remember, these giant tortoises are cold-blooded. So they heat up in the sun during the day, and they like to cool off in mud to regulate their, their temperature. Much has changed in the last two centuries since Charles Darwin visited beautiful St. Helena. Unfortunately, a lot of the forests have been cut down and also destroyed by invasive species like goats. But the conservationists here on the island are doing an absolutely incredible job replanting trees. There's a very important project called the Millennium Forest in which thousands of trees are being planted to rebuild that ancient ecosystem that Charles Darwin saw to conserve this beautiful treasure trove of unique animals and plants that occur nowhere else on earth. Well, I really hope you enjoyed seeing the tortoises. They're very special animals, aren't they? They're so beautiful.